is if there was a devastating meteor strike, what would my plan be to survive it? Right. channel Helena's Astrophotography. So in today's video um, I'm going to be doing a Q&A for you guys. So yesterday I do apologise for how late it was but I put up um, a Facebook post um, on my uh, Facebook page Helena's Astrophotography asking for questions from you guys um, and a lot of you got back. Um, it was along the lines of messaging people um, in the end to get their questions because not a lot of people were active on Facebook um, at the time that I put the post up. Um, but that was fine, I got loads of questions through for the video. Uh, for the next q and I'll make sure to let you guys know um, in advance um, and so you guys have more time to get your questions together so I can hopefully answer as many as I can. So the first question is what is your favourite star or planet and why? So I'm going to take the easy road with this one um, and answer what is your favourite planet because I could never choose my favourite star. I think it normally changes on the missions that are being sent to that planet. So for example, if Juno is being sent to Jupiter, then Jupiter might be my favourite planet at that time because of the research going on with it. Um, but right now, I think I'd have to say it's Mars. I think Mars is my favourite planet because of all the missions that um, we've sent um, up to it. So Curiosity is there at the moment. Opportunity's mission unfortunately um, came to an end. But it was a very successful mission. Um, Curiosity is still there scanning for life. The other day in the news, I don't know whether you guys saw, but Curiosity um, found um, traces of methane gas. And methane um, is normally produced um, by living things. So that's a really exciting um, opportunity um, to look for life um, and microorganisms on another planet outside our own. So yeah, I think it changes from time to time. Um, there's a helicopter, I think I'm right, being sent to Mars um, quite soon. Um, there's a, just a lot of things going on with Mars at the moment. I think it's really interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things going on um, with the Red Planet. Um, I'll let you guys know if it changes um, due to other research um, projects. But yeah, for now, it's Mars. Okay, so the second question is, what made you so interested in space? <laughs> I think this is actually quite a hard question to answer um, because there's lots of threads um, that tie to make a knot which is my interest um, if you like so uh, I did uh, in primary school I did a space project um, and researched about life on other planets and about the solar system and learnt um, all about um, worlds outside our own um, I found that really interesting and that sort of flipped a switch and it sort of made me want to go into that kind of research um, when I'm older um, I started getting post I started putting posters up on my wall started learning my way around the night sky and then I got this cute dinky little Celestron telescope you know the ones that are on um, I'll try and put a photo up for you now the ones that are on little platforms and um, with the little mini tube and um, I started with one of those and started observing the moon um, from um, our windowsill um, and then I think it just went from there my interest grew and grew and um, I started meeting more interesting people if you've watched my engineers application process video and um, you'll know um, that I applied for a CBBC program called the engineers um, and I got my observatory which I'm in right now and um, I think that flicked a massive switch um, and it's changed my perspective and my looks um, on the hobby and it's got me interested in astrophotography so yeah that's um, along the lines of where I am at the moment that is where my interest sort of started from a project way back when I was about six um, so yeah okay so the next question is what are your favourite legends um, of the night sky so I actually haven't done a lot of research on legends of the night sky um, I probably should I think it would be really interesting um, I do know um, that Orion is known as the hunter and he's got like his sword or his baton and, and his belt um, and he's known as the hunter um, of the sky. I know a little bit about that 
Um, I can't say he's my favourite because I don't have any others that I can compare him to, but I'll do my research and I'll get back to you on that one. So the next question is, what do you consider being when you're grown up? So from a very young age, I actually wanted to go into medicine, and then when I did my project um, on space in primary school, um, that um, triggered something um, in my mind and made me want to be an astronomer. Um, when, when I became older, I found that the technical term was astrophysicist. I'd really like to work um, either with an observatory um, and, or, again, I kind of want to go back to the medicinal path um, and I really would love to be like a paediatrician. Um, but I'm really not sure. It's really early days to decide what I want to be um, when I'm older. But yeah, I have lots of ideas um, and hopefully one of them will come true. So the next question is, if there was a devastating meteor strike, what would my plan be to survive it? Right. Got it. So, sometimes you can normally predict um, when like a meteor shower is coming. So if we predicted um, long enough before it actually happened, um, I think before it started, they started coming down, I'd build a little rocket and find some sort of deserted um, plain runway track. Um, I would measure the distance between me and the nearest um, meteor. I'd measure the distance between me and the nearest meteor and then um, I would add a few hundred miles so I'm um, really far away from what's going on and then I'd launch my rocket and I'd be hundreds of miles away from the meteor shower, so I'd be all right for now. And then I'd launch my rocket, and somehow I would find a way to accelerate the rocket so that it goes at like a million miles per hour. And then I would meet up with Elon Musk's Tesla and hook onto that, ride to Mars, and live on Mars. Now, don't tell me that isn't a good plan. So the next question is, what do you most want to photograph um, and why? So there's a really wide range of things um, that when I get my new telescope, I'll be like, oh, definitely getting outside, um, having the motivation to go um, outside and capture it. I think right now um, I most want to photograph the Andromeda galaxy, mainly because it's our nearest galaxy um, to us, to the Milky Way. It's the nearest galaxy to us. Um, I think the Andromeda galaxy is a really interesting galaxy um, because in I think it's 3.9 billion years the Milky Way, our galaxy, and um, the Andromeda galaxy will collide. That's how close we are. Um, I know it's like in billions of years but that's really close compared to other galaxies if you think about it. So it's really close. Um, I think it would be really nice um, to photograph that. So a similar question, the next one is what is the next shot you really want to get or the next thing you, that you'd like to see through your telescope? I think I'd probably link it with what's the next shot you want to get. I don't think the Andromeda Galaxy is the next shot I want to get. I think as soon as I get my new telescope, I'm not promising this, but as soon as I get my new telescope, I think I want to photograph Bode's Galaxy. Um, I want to photograph Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy, M81 and M82. Um, they line up really well because um, on the First Light Optics website, um, oh, by the way, I'm not sponsored um, by any brands to say any of these names, um, so yeah. So on First Light Optics website, they have like this simulator um, where you can punch in your telescope and your camera and it'll show you how um, it's framed up um, nicely. Um, and Bose Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy frame up really nicely in the shot so you really want to get those two together um, all in the same night under the same exposure time. As for the next thing I'd like to see through my telescope, I think it would be Jupiter. I photographed Jupiter um, at its opposition um, a couple of weeks back um, and I overexposed it and unfortunately that meant I couldn't see the detail on the planet so I'd really like um, to get Jupiter again so I can see the detail um, on the planet and it's four moons, Callisto, Io, Ganymede and Europa is four nearest moons, um, most visible moons um, in line with the planet. Ah, this is interesting. What is the furthest planet you can see through your telescope? It's actually Jupiter. Um, I can see Jupiter um, through um, 
Luna, um, as you saw in my um, opposition video. Um, so I shot Jupiter through Luna. Um, yeah, she does really well at shooting Jupiter. I think the best thing she can do, um, I think it's definitely the moon because obviously it's really close. Um, but um, she did well with Jupiter. Um, so yeah. Do you ever struggle to stay awake in class after staying up so late to take photos? Yes, I absolutely do. So for the blood moon um, in January, um, I almost fell asleep um, in class. I was absolutely exhausted because I got the super moon stage at 12 o'clock um, at midnight. And then, I, and then I slept from 1 till I think it was quarter to 4. So I only got a couple of hours sleep. And then I got up, shot the at uh, the blood moon phase um, of the supermoon, and um, shot the blood moon, and I was pumped with adrenaline. I was so pumped with adrenaline that I just forgot about my bed and going to sleep. And I edited the photo and printed it off and took it in to show my classmates and stuff. So yeah, that day um, I was really tired. Um, I really like school, um, so it was it's not normal for me to go around. Um, Blagging, really tired, not being motivated to go to my classes. But um, yeah, I was really tired that day. Um, but if someone asked me why I was tired, I could bring out my photo and be like, this is why I'm tired. <laughs> so the second last question is, what is your secret? If you could give one piece of advice to someone wanting to take their own photos of the moon, what would it be? So um, it's really useful to know um, the points of the moon and where all the famous craters are um, um, and where all the famous places on the moon um, are, um, like the Sea of Tranquility um, and things like that. It's really useful to look at a, a moon map first um, and then plan out where you're going from there and exactly what bit of the moon um, you want to shoot. Um, if you're just shooting the whole moon, normally um, like I do, um, get a Sky app um, on your phone. Um, I use Sky View, again I'm not sponsored to say this, but I use Sky View um, and it's, it's great, I absolutely love it. Um, I track um, the object all the way through the night on Sky View and see where it's going to be, where its peak is, um, where it's going to descend, where it's going to ascend, um, sort of thing, so I know exactly where it's going to be um, at what time. Um, this is a really useful thing when you don't have a tracking telescope. When you have a tracking telescope, it's not that big of a deal, unless you want to know um, where you're not. Wh unless you want to know when you're not going to be able to see it anymore, and um, that's the only thing it's going to be really useful for when you've got a tracking telescope. But when you've got someone at uh, something like um, a Dobsonian that's not a tracking telescope, um, yeah, I definitely recommend getting um, an app that tells you. Um, about all the points on where your shot is and so you can plan it out before you shoot. Okay, so my last question is would you rather be in the rocket that lands on an undiscovered planet or part of the team on the ground that sends the rocket into new territory? This is a fantastic question. Like something tells me I'd rather be in the rocket but something tells me that I'd also rather be training the astronauts um, on the ground team um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. I'd rather be training the astronauts than go in the actual rocket. If I had an opportunity to go in a rocket, I mean, I don't think I'd say no. Um, but, yeah, I think I'd rather be on the ground control team. Thank you so much, guys, for all your questions. Um, I'm really sorry if I didn't read out your question. I'll make sure to get it in the next Q&A video. Um, and I will definitely look up some myths and legends um, of the night sky um, so that I can get back to you on that one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.